Hi, welcome back to the YouTube channel. So this interview is with Holly Chapel. Holly is a powerhouse of passion for florists, for flowers, for life. She is one of the most inspirational women who has massively, I think, changed so many careers and has just helped people. Her whole vibe of giving and sharing and um, just really caring for people and connecting people. Um, she's a real connector and I really hope you enjoy this interview. Um, I'm so proud to call her a friend. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for joining me, Holly Chapel. Hooray, we made it. Hello, love. Brilliant. <laughs> um, so thank you so much. What I want to do is basically um, ask you some questions and I want people to be able to kind of get inside your head and for people who haven't had the joy of meeting you in real life um, to kind of understand where you've come from and kind of, you know, your, your mission and, and your plan for life. So um, can you tell me um, how you got into floristry? I, I think it's funny that you want to start with putting them in my head because that's a dangerous place. <laughs> maybe maybe that's not for everyone. It might overwhelm most people. Um, I got my start in floristry um, quite naturally, I think. Um, my father had a garden center and as children, we had to help grow plants and flowers and take care of um, veg as well. And um, we all hated it and wanted nothing to do with it. But I um, married quite young and I got a little home that had spirea and lilac and hydrangea and viburnum and peonies. And all of a sudden, I was just arranging to make my house beautiful. Now, for many years, I thought I was self taught, but I was interviewed once and I realized it was my father that had really taught me how to do all of these things. He had taught me how to make centerpieces to sell at the market um, and wreaths and garlands. And I mean, his mechanics were boss. I mean, he was an old farmer. So that's how I knew how to make everything when I actually got into my little home and started designing. So that's really how it started. I would go to a flower festival with my father and um, he would sell bedding plants and I would take bunches of lilacs and people started asking me to do weddings and I was young and I just said, yeah, I know how to do that. Yeah. And it just made it happen. <laughs> so Amazing. it was a crazy ride. Um, so when did it kind of, when did it start being kind of weddings and events that was like your main focus? Actually from the very first contract, um, it was really wedding work. A neighbor asked me if I would do her wedding. Uh, and even at the Flower and Garden Show, those little bundles of bouquets, people started saying, can you do a wedding? Can you do a wedding? Um, I had one previous contract before that where I got a wholesaler and wasn't just using the flowers from the garden. And that was the Washington International Horse Show. Do you guys, you must have things like that. These big international horse shows where the whole arena is, a de, is designed and landscaped right. with chrysanthemums and mulch and trees. And they needed a, my father had done that for, I don't know, maybe 20 years. And they needed a florist and daddy said, oh, you know, my daughter could do that. I never professionally arranged anything. And now I had this entire arena that I had to do all the floral for. So that was kind of first, but the weddings really, they, they were what really took my business off from the very beginning. So that's how it happened. Amazing. And so um, for, for people that haven't been cause, um, to, to where you are now, so tell people like, where are, where are you based? And you like, kind of your setup. Okay. I'm based in Leesburg, Virginia, which is about a half an hour outside of, um, well, it's an hour outside of DC. And I mean, when I'm really in Luckett's, which is 15 minutes outside of Leesburg, but our dress is Leesburg. I'm in um, my house right now, which is, I was a home-based studio for many, many years. Um, I still am technically, but two miles up the road is our farm, which is Hope Flower Farm. And that is where we produce the educational events and the festivals. And that's where we grow the majority of our flowers. Um, 
God, it's, do you hear all the noise? It's noisy at this house. I I'm so used to being on the farm. And because of COVID, we've been working full time at the farm. So I haven't allowed anyone in my team in this house. So we had to move the whole operation full time to the farm, which the rest of the world came home to work and I had to go to work for the first time in my life. I've been packing up and going to work and leaving my children behind. How's that been? How's and that? I, have you noticed the difference? Like, is it like the commute? Do you have a, cause you've got a commute now. Uh, that the commute. So I know it's like minutes, pretty, but you have that downtime. Like, actually the first three days I had like anxiety, like true anxiety. I, I've not really experienced it before and I didn't know why. And then I realized like, I was going the entire day without seeing my children. And to some people that's normal, but I have never, ever, ever been out of this house. Like, even if I'm in, physically working on them and working on the business, I see them go by. I know they're alive. I know they're eating. I know they bathe. <laughs> um, so these days up at the farm, you know, I, it would hit me at two o'clock in the afternoon and I would just be hit with this anxiety because I had no idea if the kids were okay. If you do this and stay home with your children for that long, I mean, it really gets ingrained in you. Now, of course, most people don't have seven children and it doesn't take 28 years to get them all out of the house, but that is what happened with me. So we've got a ways to go yet. <laughs> um, so um, I know you because um, I, I saw an ad advertisement for um, this chapel designers meeting that was happening in London and I saw the pictures of what had happened the year before and it looked amazing and um, and I rang up um, it was Jay Archer actually uh, another florist who I'd never met before and I just rang her and I said um, I've seen this thing um, it just look I just feel like I've got to go to it should I go to it and Jay Archer said yes you have to do this you have to do this um, so I went on a little pilgrimage down to London on the train on my own and was really nervous and just joined this thing that has actually transformed a lot of my life and my business how did you so the chapel designers is an international organization 10 years this year isn't it it's our 10th anniversary yeah it's making me beautiful thinking about that journey on the train i was so nervous and then I felt like my life oh sorry oh gosh um but it, being for people who aren't chapel designers this is an organization of florists that you've brought together and it's just it's like for me it felt like coming home to people who understood everything i please don't cry that, that I, I needed and didn't know i needed and that family is now all over the world um and i've had chapel designers stay in my home i've had chapel designers work for me i've been to your you know your wonderful farm and your home um how did it kind of come about for people who don't know uh. 10, I guess almost now 11 years ago, I started um, social media, which many floors were not. I was blogging and sharing the stories that happened in my studio. Now, it never occurred to me that I should be closed and not share my knowledge and my experience and be of service to these designers that started writing me. Then I got on Twitter and um, you know, I was talking to several people on the regular on Twitter. And at the time still social media was very, very small. So you had a sense that like no one was really paying attention and that you were just talking to your little group of friends. Well, I just said, who wants to meet me in New York City? And all of a sudden these people said they were going to come. And I really meant like, Hey, no, Alicia and, uh, <laughs> and you know, swank stems and all these other people that I was talking to. And then all of a sudden I realized I was, you know, I had something here and I needed to run with it. So I have, I have at, least at this time been in New York once. I don't know my way around New York and I decide I'm going to host an event in New York. And, um, I guaranteed $14,000 worth of hotel rooms to my personal credit card. I did not tell my husband that I had done that. I just really believed that these designers were going to come and take over these hotel bookings and we would gather and um, learn with each other, spend time together. And as it started, it just started morphing and I knew it better be named. Um, so I named it in a way like it's, Chapel, Holly Chapel spoke different than chapel designers. I wanted it to be slightly connected 
to my name, but in a way that was inclusive to anyone that was in the wedding and event profession. So, and actually in the beginning, there were planners as well. Um, and it just, you know, it started developing and growing from there. And um, then Nick Priestley from Scotland and I ended up on the Botanical Brouhaha um, blog, Amy's blog, and um, a panel of experts, and we connected, and Nick was like, this is going to happen, you're going to come abroad, and I'm saying right now, I'm going to be the one to bring you. He goes, I'm just telling you right now, and I was like, well, you don't even know what it is. He goes, you're right, I'll come to well, yes. New York first, sorry, children are home, and um, he said, I'll come to New York first, but mark my words, you're coming to London. And that's how it started. And our mentality of this openness and, and sharing with others, it was not seen in this profession. It was absolutely not the way it was. And um, we really changed. Um, we really changed the profession in that we made it almost a trend to be authentic, to be true to yourself, to be open, to be sharing. And, you know, the same thing happened in London that happened in New York. When we came to London and brought that concept over, it is, it's just such a powerful experience to have colleagues and people that you can trust to share because this is not an easy career. Um, there are so many stresses and fears and questions and challenges and concerns. And um, having a support network, that relief, it I will, I mean, I, I feel it every time we talk about it. If someone told me I had to go back to my life before all of you and continue on the path that I was on, I would absolutely emphatically not do it because mm -hmm. it was very, very, very lonely in that flower shop all by myself. And you know, the wonderful thing about us being international is that, you know, you can hop into the forum at just about any time of the day and one of us will be awake and can help each other. Nick used to say, and I loved this so much because most of the designers at the time when he joined were American, he could end his day with concerns and problems and just throw them into the forum and go to sleep at night knowing that when he woke up in the morning, the answers would be there. So that, you know, time difference has been a benefit to all of us as well too. So it's, it's been incredible. It's an unbelievable journey. And so many of us have met so many beautiful people you know, the absolute top tier teachers in the industry have taught for chapel designers. I, I really can't think of anyone that hasn't been one of our teachers. So that's pretty, pretty awesome. So yeah, it's amazing. been an incredible journey and I'm so grateful you're a part of it. I just love your heart and soul. You're amazing. Oh, it is. It's amazing. It is. Yeah. And having like been to, been to work, been to the States as well, where, you know, with Lizzie, we traveled out together a couple of times and it, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm devastated that's not happening this year, but I know that it will happen again in the future. Yeah, it, it's very sad and I don't know, um, I don't know if I'll do some kind of little, you know, just gathering just to mark the date, but mm -hmm. the event will, ha it has suffered ramifications that I didn't even imagine. I don't know that I've shared this with you, but the tent company has gone under so these glamping tents that came in that made this event so unique and special, mm -hmm. um, the company, because of COVID, has, they had to call it quits within four or five weeks of being closed. Wow. I mean, they were doing huge music festivals, like hundreds of tents, and, you know, the, everything was canceled and they couldn't sustain themselves. So it's really, it's very sad. Yeah, that is terrible. There were, oh, there were such lovely people. So I'll have to reinvent well, it like everything else that's having to be reinvented yeah, and reimagined. Yeah. People absolutely, sleep in the barn absolutely. in sleeping bags. I don't know. <laughs> the cat crawling all yeah. over. Um, so tell, for, obviously we're recording this now in crazy 2020 mad year of life. Um, but what would like a typical week be or like a normal week in Holly Chapel world? What would it be? like before all of this uh, back, in terms of back in the day um you know monday was typically our team getting our head together for the week 
Um, Tuesday was going over the orders, pulling inventory, um, you know, making sure that we had 400 candlesticks and 500 bowls or whatever the heck we needed. It was kind of a landmine of pulling all of the bits and pieces because our events were quite developed and complicated. There was a lot of extra inventory. So it usually took us a day to pull um, hard goods and clean glass and all of that. Um, Wednesday, the flowers would come. Um, they were prepped in the studio. Um, for anyone who has studied with me, each wedding has a complete and total buy list and recipes written. And the weddings are divided. You know, this is the Smith wedding. This is the Jackson wedding. This is the Patterson wedding. The flowers are all separated so we don't get into each other's stems. Um, the graded, of course, and all of that. And then a sample of each centerpiece, low, is made to make sure that the color palettes are as I intended them to be, that my recipe is strong and valid, um, and that it, it isn't needing anything else. Um, we check our numbers to make sure that if we think it needs something else, that we can afford to buy it. Um, and if, it, if we can't afford to buy it, then it is as it is. Um, but we make certain, you know, if you've got multiple weddings, it's quite complicated um, because you, you can, if you get to the last wedding on Friday and you haven't verified that you have everything you need before Friday, then you don't have another chance to fix it. So on Wednesday, we tackle a little bit of each one and maids bouquets are sorted and separated and bridal bouquets so that the finest bits aren't being pulled for centerpieces. And then everything is put up and on Thursday, we start massive production. Um, Friday, again, we'll leave any designs that are you know, more fragile for Friday. Bridal work is done on Friday. And then Saturday, it's a full day of you know, teams dispersing and going to weddings. Um, you know, in a perfect world, we'd only have one big sexy wedding. That is not what happens. Often we take multiple mm -hmm. to make, um, make our numbers. Um, because of course we're all trying to make enough money to get through the winter season. Don't know how we'll do that this year, but um, it's a bit of a madhouse. Uh, I don't have a big team. And so I do rely on chapel designers to freelance and because that they are who I feel the most secure with and comfortable with. And um, it adds also an element of excitement to what can be a really stressful, you know, weekend. Oh, Sarah's in the house, Perry's coming, Aisha's coming. You know, when you start calling in your friends, um, it puts a little bit of a celebration into what is like, holy shit, how are we gonna do this? So that's, that's what a normal week looked like before. And of course that's quite different now, so. I don't know if you want to hear what it's like now or or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I'd love to hear what it's like. I think everyone is doing different things, just trying to get through, you know, each uh, day. Really. Do you think, do you have um, more free time now or less free time? Less. I, actually, it's pro I never had any free time. Um, and that that's hard too, because I have some, you know, when this first happened, I had a moment of like, this is awesome because nothing has stopped me and this will mean that i actually get to rest like i have it's, like, no it's a global pandemic to stop holly chapel <laughs> yeah like let's sit still and no one can do anything focus mm. and it's because it was cold and raining the first week or two of COVID, and then full-on spring came and all of the gardening and the work that had to happen and the realization that the stems that I had were going to save us made me like, holy shit, how are we going to plant this whole entire farm to have enough flowers for what we need? And how are we going to set up a shop, which we did not have a retail shop yeah. to move these stems because I'm looking at this farm and these flowers and this is all i have and so there was an incredible sense of urgency to you know plant more and to build a flower shop an online shop and um, create a safe way for people to come and get them 
and my team could not come to work. So it was me. And I, you know, I worked alone for many, many years, but when you get used to having, you know, a core group with you to be all alone again and not even have somebody to go get you a rake when you're in the middle of the patch. I mean, it's like, or I need a bucket, you know, I mean, it's just like, so it was just so much. And I was paying everyone's payroll because I, I, I didn't want to lose my team. It was, um, and so they're all at home working on the computer and I'm in, you know, in deep in the mud and then I'm doing all the designing and I'm also trying to understand this new online shop. It was unbelievable. It was really, really a big challenge, but it was also very powerful, encouraging because I was shown that my clients believe and need flowers and they want to support me. I was shown that I could still design it all by myself if I had to, in spite of the fact that I'm a little bit older than I used to be. Um, and I also was just really so proud of the farm and what had been grown. I, I mean, magically, I don't, a chapel designer was at my house the weekend that my mother died last May. And she was a tulip farmer and she told me how wonderful it was to grow the tulips. Now I had always been forewarned not to grow them because the moles and the voles will eat them. And so I'd never tried. She said, put a tarp down first, put soil on top of that and then grow your tulips on top of this black plastic tarp. Because of her being at my farm, I invested in all these tulips. And when, when the end of March came and the beginning of April and those tulips started coming up, like it was a crop I wouldn't have had. And there mm -hmm. they were. And they were like, Oh my God, I have to sell these. And that's how it all started. Now, the, now the shop is moving along and we continue to get orders every day and people are flocking to the farm and we made it so that it was a fun experience. I don't, I, maybe some of you might have seen on social media, we did a huge wedding installation and we used all faux because we couldn't afford to do it any other way. Um, a large, massive wedding installation that most people don't get to experience or enjoy. And this beckoned everyone to the farm so that they could take a picture in the field. We put a ladder out in the field with a board propped on it. So it was their tripod and they were instructed to stay in their car until the family before them went. There was no sitting or touching the structure. You just stood in front of it and got your picture. And people loved it. So we did it again. We did a big hope sign in the field. And now we realize that all of those people just coming, they couldn't even get out of the car. They were dying to get out of the car. They wanted to watch me arrange. They wanted to come into the farm and see the buildings. And so I really think that will be where we move towards. I'm applying, believe it or not, for a liquor license um, and try and create an experience where people can come and hang out um, and enjoy the flowers. So I think that's where we will head to until everything else can get back on track. Um, you know, all of the education was canceled. That was, you know, we had a conference scheduled in Ireland, um, New York. We were due to celebrate our 10th anniversary um, the week that the, the venue, which is called the Javits Center, we were scheduled to be in that venue for the World Flower Expo and it became a hospital in New York City. Like literally COVID hit two weeks before our 10th annual conference. All the students had paid, all of the you know, merchants were paid, speakers, all of it was all done. It was all planned. It was a year's worth of work. I had to give everyone their money back. Um, it's been a hit on multiple levels, you know, and, um, we're just trying to keep our team and hold on to that farm. That is, you know, that's the goal right now is to keep the farm. And I'm working hard to try and make it happen. That was a lot of answers. Sorry. <laughs> so it's such a special place though. I think people will want to be there. 
it, just people will come and they will want it, to it, 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 it will work. It's a beautiful place. I know that that is my greatest resource and I'm incredibly grateful for it. You know, I think the hardest thing for me that I'm having trouble with is the loss of the people. Like, you know, it was in London, skipping down the street with Nick Priestley and Evan that I said, oh, I think I like people as much much as I like flowers and they were like I think I said I love people as much as I love flowers I'm like you think like you're an idiot if you didn't know this and several people have said to me like this being cut off from my colleagues is very draining for me because I get energy from you all and so it's it's been really hard I'm, I miss the teachers I'm very, very, very close to some of them. And then of, of course, all the chapel designers are like family. I mean, so it's, I don't know. And I don't know when we'll be able to travel again. I don't, I don't see that until they get a hold of this virus. I don't see where that's going to be. I don't see it. Yeah. yeah I don't think it's going to be for, it's for a while. Um, there's just a massive thunderstorm happening here. <laughs> So just bear with me if it cuts off because the sky is literally just exploding. Um, you right. and I so, are um, having I mean, fun with us. Oh, honestly, technology is wonderful yep. at times. Um, so can you tell, like, if people want to be a florist, could you, like, share some of, like, your massive highs? And then, like, obviously we've just talked about some lows, but, um, you know, like, anything that you can like remember like the moment when you stood and was like oh this is it like this this is like a career high for me I mean you must you've had loads so I, I mean I get high just going into the garden and harvesting like I love that experience so much it is so spiritual it really is I I think being being a, a, young, a young woman who had massive children at her feet, who never dreamed she would go anywhere. I mean, it, I didn't even dare to dream it. It never crossed my mind that I would ever leave my home and get to experience these incredible moments. You know, going to New York City, going to Australia, going to China, Russia, you know, England, Scotland, Ireland. I mean, like, Every, every time I got to travel, it, it didn't matter if it was North Carolina or Mississippi, I, I had an incredible sense of wonder and gratitude that that could happen for a small business like myself, for a mother entrepreneur, um, and for someone who was selling flowers. I mean, that... That is a, a high that will carry me for the rest of my life. If I never get to do it again, I will still be so grateful that I got to have those opportunities. But another, mm -hmm. another whopper was the White House. Um, uh, the White House florist um, noticed chapel designers and what we were doing. And um, she contacted me to volunteer. And I began volunteering at the White House. And I went probably 50 or 60 times. And she allowed me to bring maybe 40 or 50 travel designers in over the several years that we worked with her. And every time I went through those gates with my clippers in my pockets and, you know, floral knives, it was like, this is amazing like they're letting a florist in here it was incredible but that was you know back in the barack obama days and it was quite an honor <laughs> so i haven't been back since he left i shall just say that <laughs> <laughs> oh amazing amazing that is incredible that is totally incredible what do you think um so like in when we get back to normal is there anything that you want to that you haven't achieved yet that you'd like to that keeps you going you know i i am very i wanted to make hope a destination and i immediately started making it a destination with my flower family i think that it's a blessing that i'm having this time to focus on this farm um because i think that deserves time and an opportunity to be developed 
and we actually had our first wedding at the farm during COVID, which was amazing. Um, you know, and I don't know that a lot of people know this, but the farm has a service component to it, which is when I, I guess another high would be getting the farm because we did not have the financial means for it. And we were doing the biggest wedding of our career. And um, I had the money in the bank and I applied to get this farm. And, you know, honestly, I did not deserve it. I'm, well, I may, I may have deserved it, but financially, we did not make the criteria or the numbers. And, so, and a miracle happened. Someone who um, believed in me someone who had studied with me said she had seen what I was doing in the profession and she believed in my mission to make that a destination for floral designers. And so she also gave us a loan and that's how we made it. But the, what I said to her, and I will never forget it. I, I didn't want to take her help, but then, um, you know, she insisted and I have a loan. It wasn't a giveaway. I had to get that in my mind. I have a loan with her. But I looked into her eyes and I swore to her that that farm would do good and that it would have a service component. And so through the farm, we've done things like, um, I've talked to kids with cancer. Um, I just did funeral flowers for a young man who drowned, um, a leader in our community. Um, we've done a big flora and fauna fashion show that all of those proceeds benefited kids with cancer. I have reached out to several um, black leaders in my community and also told them they could have the farm. I want to build out the service component so that I can keep that promise. I think it has great potential in that flower therapy realm if I keep pushing there as well. So yeah. it will have the service component as well as, you know, become this destination that I am longing that it will be. And honestly, you know, the, the money always controls our decisions, right? Like, I had weddings booked, so I just kept doing them, which meant I couldn't focus up there. And I would have never, being the person who's responsible for the children's lives and keeping all of these balls rolling, I would have never quit doing the weddings mm -hmm. in order to look at what I have. And, you know, now that is a really big opportunity for me. I can't go after the weddings, so I need to focus on what I have and what I can do to make a difference in every way it make it make the farm successful and also as a human being how can i serve what can i do to make lives better for children who are struggling or for equality i mean that is you know all of us have the ability to make a difference and that's always been really really important to me i started that with you know they call me the flower mama taking care of other floral designers and that is, that's big and that's awesome and that's huge, but there's more that we all can do individually. And that's a big, a big part of what, um, what I've been thinking about lately. Sorry. <laughs> Amazing. This is the darkest space. <laughs> when we started this, we've already tried this once before. I was at the barn and I had this beautiful glow around me. And now I'm in this dark <laughs> office with my puppy. Do you want to see my new puppy? Look at my <laughs> No. Uh, look at this guy. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> oh, my children this are desperate. Is buckets. They're desperate for a dog. <laughs> we named the puppy Buckets, <laughs> which actually <laughs> happened by about baseball. Like when you get a, a bas not baseball, basketball. When you get a basketball in the net, it's called a bucket. And, um, Unfortunately, we got him the day that Kobe died, which is a very famous basketball player in this country. And so Grace and Evan love this name. Well, no one thought about how ridiculous it would be to have a puppy named Buckets in a flower shop. I need a bucket. I need a bucket. And the puppy's like dancing around. It's like, was so not smart. But he's really quite fun. He's so I've got two more questions to ask you that I have to ask. Okay. Okay, um, so if you were going to be a florist, in, like, so if somebody comes up to you and says, Holly, I want to be a florist, what do I do? Like, what advice do you have for people who want to be florists in the future? I 
I mean, apart from my streaming. <laughs> no, 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 no. First of all, I will say this: if you are a hundred percent certain you want to be a florist, then I will help you. Um, and we have all kinds of education. You know, we do on, we're in the middle of a comprehensive online course right now that we teach from beginning to end. I'll, I'll put a link on the YouTube too. Okay. Education is wonderful because you don't have to make the mistakes that I made. You know, I dove into this and, you know, I would have these extreme moments of fear and anxiety because I hadn't been there before in that particular situation. And I can say I've pretty much walked through just about all of it now. But I would also say, like, I remember one of the first travel designers she was a young engineer and very successful young woman. And she said, I, I think I should quit being an engineer and be a florist. What do you think? And I said, oh, no, baby girl. Like, if you know that you want to give up being an engineer and you want me to help you, I will help you. But I would never encourage anyone to give up a very successful career and walk this walk because I'm not going to take the blame for that. Like, if you feel it so strongly, that you can't stop yourself, then I'm there to help you. But I would not, you know, I would not push anyone into this career because you have got to want it from your nose to your toes. I mean, truth be said. I think it's like a calling, isn't it, in a way? It's like a call. It like really, a it calling. really is. I do think that once you feel the love and the joy of flowers and like a seed and it takes root i don't think you can deny it i really i i think you, it will call you back over and over again like an illness <laughs> so but i mean for some people they fantasize about it and they just don't realize how much work it is so that's what i would say but those people can just come and do courses and just play yes go and have fun <laughs> Um, so the, yeah, there's um, one silly question, but before that, I wanted to ask um, about your product line. So you, the Holly Chapel egg and the pillows, I have used them loads, loads and loads and loads, and you can get them here in um, online and at Country Baskets, which is a big, like, um, yes, like sure. Um, well, so if you were at the second London, then you were there when we made the pillow. Were you yeah. there for that yeah. one? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. So yeah. you were you witnessed it being born, yeah. which was you know I I taught you guys how to make the egg and the bridal bouquet, and um, Evan had picked all those beautiful vessels from the sundries merchant, and we didn't want to scratch them or tape them or put foam in them, so we made our first pillow, and it was right there in London that we did it. So that's a, that's amazing. So that's through syndicate sales, and actually. Um, I'm just starting to tell people I'll probably get in trouble, but in August, we'll have a new line. Um, it is a more contemporary vessels so that it is more like current for today's vibe because we're switching to this contemporary look. And also I have invented um, or come up with something new for installations. So there's more news coming Brilliant. about that also. Yay! I think it's no, just really changed so much the way that people arrange like so many people and I, I like the fact that once you've got that mechanic like of the pillow or the egg or whatever you can do stuff like I've been sending you pictures I've been making like headpieces and I know loads of people have used them for all different things there's just so many options it, it really it really does work so well in so many applications I mean it, it's ridiculous how helpful they are so I mean even you know, we had one weekend where we had a girl who had all elevated, just greenery arrangements. And they were massive and she didn't want to take them home. And we had a Sunday wedding the next day. All of those arrangements, we were just be able to pick them up off the stands. And we zip tied these big, huge green bundles down the railing of the wedding on Sunday. And I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. We bought all this garland to do the, uh, the railing. Right. And we 
we were so much more successful just zip tying those, you know, massive centerpieces onto the railing. It was beautiful. Yeah, I love that. And that's so, and it's so much better for the environment as well, that isn't it? Being able to use sure. it again and again. That's awesome. Um, so ridiculous question that I ask everybody. If you're in the workshop and you've got a massive wedding on and you're working really hard and you're really hungry and you reach for that snack, what is that snack? What's like the Holly Chapel snack of choice? Okay, my favorite is cheeses, but that's not very easy in the flower shop. So, but that would be my favorite choice if I could get to it and continue designing. That's what I would pick. That's Little what bit of I Shane love Collins. blue cheese. Shane Collins. What? Shane was cheese and apple. That was his. Uh, that was his choice. Uh, see there, I'm like him some ways. <laughs> I wish I was as eloquent and elegant, and he's just so incredible <laughs> oh we're so lucky there's so many so many fabulous people we're all with different like missions and just passion that's what it comes down to passion and crazy flower calling it does and you're so true and you have that in tenfold and you know it's just been so fun to watch everybody grow and develop like the things that you have done it's just amazing. I mean, I'm so proud of you and I love that I met you. I'm blessed to have you as a friend. Yay. Oh, I can't wait. We'll meet, we will meet again. We will meet again. Oh, Definitely. of course we will. I mean, <laughs> I'm not letting this be forever. I can't. <laughs> no way. I'll be swimming. We'll be swimming together. Me and Lizzie will be swimming on our, on our boat across the Atlantic. Crazy. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> She's well, a good dancer. God, she's a good dancer. <laughs> amazing dancer. She is. Her, yeah, her and Ozzy and um, yeah, just everyone. Susan McCleary. All, all, yeah, so much fun. So yeah. much fun. We've had dancing. Brilliant. Well, um, thank you, Holly, for your time, my love. Thank you so much. All right. Love, love you. Yeah. Okay. I shall let, yeah. Bye. So we'll say bye-bye. Bye-bye.